Hello everyone and welcome to Treasured, a channel that is meant to inspire, encourage and empower women around the world. And today I have the privilege and honor of um, sitting down and talking to my brother, uh, Bishop Jude Ahere, and uh, he's the pastor of Pastor of Life in um, Esaba in uh, Delta State in Nigeria. And um, so he has agreed to sit down and talk with us today uh, concerning um, the SARS protest in Nigeria and uh, the state of affairs in Nigeria. Uh, so we're going to welcome him uh, to the show. And um, welcome and thank you for joining us uh, today. Thank you very much, my lovely sister. I'm, I'm honored to be here. Thank you for inviting me. It's, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, um, thank you. Um, it, there might be maybe a, a few seconds of delay just because of the distance, because uh, he's actually joining us uh, from Nigeria. And uh, bear with us with the um, video quality as well. We're going to do the best we can um, to, I mean, do this show as successfully as we can. Thank you so much. Um, well, Bishop, we just want to, I mean, talk to you. I really am really curious with what has been going on. I want to hear, you know, your take, and I'm sure our viewers are also, you know, um, interested in hearing, you know, from a religious leader's uh, perspective. What is your take on uh, the current the uh, protest um, to end SARS in Nigeria and um, the state of affairs? What do you think? Well, um, it has been quite hot here in Nigeria in the past three weeks or thereabouts. Um, it actually didn't start now. It's something that we have been experiencing for quite some time. But you know, sometimes when, um, when you've endured a whole lot of things, when you've bottled up a lot, it gets to a point where you can't take any more. I think that's where Nigeria is right now. Um, we have been praying, and um, if not for intervention, God's intervention in this, um, in this nation, I believe that God loves us so very much. A lot has happened, and um, um, half of what has happened here has not happened in other places where um, war broke out and a lot of things happened. But um, Nigeria would been able to bottle up a lot of things. And this time, it is the youth who are saying, no, we, we, um, my sister and um, all our viewers, a lot has happened in Nigeria. We've actually been praying, but we also know that the Bible says um, faith without work is dead. Um, so the youth has taken it over from us, and we are trusting God that um, um, it will end on a positive note. Um, I'm sure you, you must have heard of the killing on um, two Tuesdays ago. Yes. It was quite painful. People who were protesting without guns, without uh, instructions and all that, some of them were killed holding the Nigerian flag in their hands. Yet our Nigerian army opened fire on some of them. Um, it's quite unfortunate we are we are in pain here, our hearts are bleeding, but um, um, from, from my own end, the youths are right, and this is um, long, long overdue, um, you know, long, long overdue. Okay, As yes. a man of God, I wouldn't want to say some things that would trigger up some things again tomorrow, but... Nigeria is a kind of place with all the blessings, with all the resources that God has given to us. We, we can have light in our generator to be sure we are able to, um, you know, do this that we are doing. And that costs a lot of money. An average Nigerian man is a struggling man. They, struggle, they can struggle, they, they can do whatever they want to do 
without the support of anybody. In, in, in Nigerian youth can still go to the farm, do whatever they want. They are very strong, hardworking, committed, rugged, and dogged kind of people. No okay. road, no light. But yet, God is still helping me. Yes. Yes. Okay. But, Bishop, I think also what, you know, our viewers yes. would like to hear is what exactly is you know the church what is the role of the church you know in all of this yeah. how has the church been able to you know influence you know the political you know um governance in in nigeria especially what is the church doing about it you know that is what you know a lot of people are interested in are they just going to sit back and just pray and hope that things change you know, or what are they doing to support, you know, the youth? And how can the church, you know, influence, you know, and promote good political governance in Nigeria? Uh, my dear, the truth is that there is no genuine man of God here in Nigeria that has not talked. Um, we have talked, we've had a series of meetings with the government. Um, we have a body in Nigeria called the, the Christian Association of Nigeria, and um, which I happen to be um, part of them. And um, we also have the body too that is called the PFN, the, the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. The truth is that we are talking. But you see, one of the worst um, fight anyone would would not want to go into is a religious war. Mm -hmm. And um, if, we, if we go beyond the level that we are going, definitely to result into a religious war, which we as ministers of God, we've been trying to avoid. It didn't start to do. Most of our senior fathers have been talking. Some have said a lot, some have been arrested. Are you talking about religion? Are you talking about religious war? Years ago. Are you talking about religious war between Christians and Muslims? I'm telling you, if we don't take time. Yeah. Now, if we if we don't take time as ministers, if we go beyond what we are doing, okay. The the uh, the other body will think the Muslim will think we we are opposing them. So we have to tread with caution to avoid religious war. Let the, the religious body have a meeting point, a, a, a ground of where they can but, understand themselves. But because this is the problem we have, Bishop. Are Muslims who are there right now. You, yes. know, you know, but Bishop, why can't we work collaboratively you know, with the Muslims? Why can't the Christians work with the Muslims? This issue does not, I mean, does not only concern um, Muslims or just Christians. It concerns every Nigerian. You know, the, I mean, the corruption, the, you know, oppression and, you know, everything that is going on in Nigeria does not only affect Muslims or, I mean, or affect Christians. I mean, it affects Nigerians. Why can't they work together? You know, so you know they can find you know common grounds, so that they can address you know these issues that are very. Look at it, even the churches. How much does it cost you to run generator? You know, to have you know your to, to services. You know, to I mean, have you know your Sunday you know service. I'm sure the same thing goes for the. I mean, there's everybody's. I mean, suffering the brunt of no power in Nigeria. Nigeria is. I mean supposed to be so blessed, uh, you know, a wealthy nation. If we start talking about all the problems in Nigeria today, we'll be here, you know, the next three hours still talking about it. We're not interested in talking about problems, but we're interested in talking about um, the solution. What do you think, you know, is the solution? What, you know, the religious body, the Christian, you know, body can do as well as, you know, the collaboration with the Muslims, what they can do, you know, to solve this issue? you know, that is really affecting every Nigerian, you know, to a point, you know, that people are actually, I mean, suffering in the street and, you know, there's so much anger, resentment, and also, you know, um, the government turning against its own people, 
you know, to, I mean, open fire, for the army to open fire on peaceful protesters on the street. I mean, people have the right to protest, you know, and demand some level of accountability from their government. Well, the truth is, where we are now, it is not just the religious leaders. Like I said, the re religious leaders, they've done their best. The government has refused to listen. Um, some pastors have been arrested. There was a time they, they sent SSS um, to get some pastors arrested. Those who spoke out and all they were arrested. Um, you know, all kinds of things have happened. And that is why you see that now that it is the youth, the church is fully backing the youth that are protesting. We are not in support of the, the violence, the killing of people, destruction of things, no. But you see the peaceful riots, I'm sure there is no genuine uh, man of God who did not back up the youth one way or the other. The protests, because we have talked, we have discussed, we have prayed, we've been praying, we are still praying up till now. I think what is going on now is what we need. And if it goes beyond this, where everybody's protesting, everybody's talking, some churches went out, some churches on a Sunday, like our church last Sunday, we, 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 we had to put on, our, we all wore black to sympathize with those, with the families that died. And then we came out of the church to, to, to declare that we are in support of, of a new Nigeria. A new Nigeria needs to be born. If nothing happens now, I am telling everybody, there may be a revolution. The government just has to listen. People have suffered enough. Men of God, pastors, the clergy, they are not enjoying it. Those in the street are not enjoying it. The members are not enjoying it. We speak to these people, they don't hear. The truth about it is that when most of them get to power, when they get to this office, they no longer listen to their pastors. Okay, but let me, let me, no let me quickly listen. Yeah, let and me you quickly. know, the only way to know a man's heart is to give him power and give him influence. Correct. And let me quickly, you know, interject, you know, there. We talk, you said they're no longer listening, but at the same time, some Nigerian pastors are like one of, some, some of them are some of the wealthiest yes. pastors in the world. I'm not talking about Africa. I'm not talking about West Africa. I'm not talking, we're talking about, I'm talking about the world. If you were to, I mean, Google the, I mean, richest Niger the richest pastors in the world, at least the top, the first top 10, you will have at least a couple of Nigerians. There are at least two or three of them, you know, which are like in the top 10. Why that influence, that wealth, how can they use that yes. to impact, to influence what is going on, you know, in Nigeria? How does that help the average Nigerian life? How does it help their congregation? How does that help, you know, the government? If you have that, if somebody has that type of money, you know, and that wealth, that is enough to influence, you know, what happens, you know, in their country. How, how does that impact, you know, the average Nigerian the congregation? That, these are the things that a lot of people are talking about. We have these wealthy people yet. We have, you know, a lot of people that are suffering in the, in the country. If they are so wealthy, they have that influence. How does that influence what is going on in Nigeria? How does it influence the government? How does that, that their wealth, how does it help the average person, even in their congregation? How does that, because people talk about this, you know, we have to also, you know, hold them accountable. They are not like immune you know from this i think you know they are also part of the system that everything needs you need to look at everything you know as a whole collectively and not just you know a portion of it just, not just those politicians in power if if they have you know all this money and all this wealth that is a lot of influence you know as well you know how does that impact the lives of the ordinary nigerian 
Um, well, um, I want us to look at it two ways. Um, you are talking about an individual. You are talking about just a small fraction of the people. Um, we have a lot of pastors and all. You look at it, how many are really wealthy? Like I said some time ago in another um, a program, I told them, I said, out of a hundred pastors, maybe just five are really, really that wealthy. And then the 95, they are just struggling and managing. How far can that um, five, the five percent, how far can it go? That is one. I also want you to look at it. The government is there doing something. All these people you think are wealthy, they all have different programs of reaching out to the poor around them. I am not defending them. I know somehow we, we also have our excesses, which we sometimes do. We discuss, we say it when we come, when we meet together, we let people know that some of these um, um, excesses should be looked into. We know that. But how much does the pastor have to take, to do what the government is supposed to do? Um, but by them doing their, the doing their, have, by them doing their own part, these things you know, as well. Have, right? Yes. They okay. have those gifts. No, Bishop, yes. this is actually, you know, also you have to look at it. I'm no, not, no, I'm no, not let, picking, let me, I'm not picking, I'm not picking on, on the pastors only, but I think that, you know, just how you have, we're talking about leaders of, of, a, of a nation. You have political leaders, you have religious leaders, you know, you have, you know, you have influence in your, in your area where you are in, you know, yeah. right there in Asaba, in your church as a leader. So you can also, you are making your own impact. The difference that you make in your community. If I do the same thing and the other person does the same thing, so that's something that we actually, you know, collectively, we can make a significant impact, you know, in the nation. But if we are only waiting for one government, you know, one person or whoever, you know, is in power, you know, to do something is, and then we just keep our wealth, you know, to ourselves, then how will everyone benefit, you know, from it? And because in the first place, all that wealth came from the public, came from, um, you know, the congregation. So where do they give back? Where do they, I know sometimes they give back in their own little ways, you know, that they can, but don't you think that they can do more? Is you know, things uh, like this. My, my dear, the truth, the, the, if you are not close, yes, if you are not close to them, this is the truth. Eh? If you are not close to them, you won't know what they are doing. You're right. If, right. if um, Take, for instance, the, this COVID-19. Take, for instance, this COVID-19. Those who couldn't meet up at that time, they became our responsibility. We had to reach out to them. We had to call those who have, get the little, little that they all have like that, put all of them together. We have to reach those, the, the less privileged around us. We had to talk to them. On our own part, we reach out to our community. We have given our community, we've given them water. We've done a lot of things. We've even done our, our, our played our part to see that we influence our roads being done. Sometimes we go out, we do all that. Now, if you are not close to us, we don't have to blow a trumpet. There are people there that you say it. That is the way some of these men are. We just see their, we see the, the, the way they dress, we see the cars, the, the, the ride and all that. And then we just think these people are not working. And let me also say this, there is how far some of them can go, no matter how much we think they are, no matter how much we think they are. That's to me anyway, I'm just talking, I'm just speaking for myself. And um, I wouldn't want that, but the government should be able 
If they play their part, I've played my part, the little way I can, everybody plays their part, and the government on overall comes to play their part, the place will be a better place. Will you expect an individual to bring light to Nigeria? One man, one church. Will okay. you expect okay. an individual okay. to Talking not about that. do all the roads? No, the okay. no, Bishop, you know what? I agree with you that one person cannot do it, but what have they yes. done? These people with, that have immersed so much wealth for themselves, we talk about the businessmen, we talk about the religious leaders, we talk about, you know, the politicians, all of them. If all of them were to come together and say, you know, they want to have power in Nigeria, I know they can do it. But it's because everybody, they have used their own wealth to create a different world, you know, for themselves. You know, amongst a people that are so hungry and also, you know, they face a lot of, you know, oppression, you know, and suffering. So I, I also think that they have, we have to hold leaders accountable. We hold them accountable. I mean, the politicians, the same way we have to hold, I mean, the religious leaders accountable, the same way we have to, you know, hold, and we hold ourselves accountable as well. I also think that they have a role, you know, to play, you know, in this.